Worker D, what do you think? Now you're saying it will be included. All right, let me keep both the answers for the time being. He's in the system. Yeah, when was he entered? 15th of April, right? You see, he's in the system. Worker D is in the system. But shouldn't Worker D have been included in any of the previous runs? It has been entered long ago, right? The entry was added on the 15th of April. That's correct, but why wouldn't this worker have been included in any previous run? Maybe the 21st run. It was not effective on or before 21st of April. It was not effective. So, on the 15th of April, this was the future dated higher. Yeah, correct. On 15th of April. If today is the 15th of April, if you look at the worker today, and let's say today is 15th of April, then worker D is what? A future dated higher, correct. Is it similar to worker B? Worker B, we have made the entry today, 26th of April, but it's a future dated higher. So exactly the same reason that Worker B did not get included in today's run is the same reason why Worker D did not get included in the run on the 21st of April. Correct. It was not included on the 21st of April run. It is only getting included on this run because it became effective when the 26th of April is between 28th of April and 21st of April, right? Effective date, comparisons between this date and this date. That is why this worker will be included in this run. These are launch parameters. These are parameters that we will enter when we launch the integration. Remember when we had some prompts, when we created a report, we were looking at workers who were hired between two dates, from date and to date. Remember? So why did we do that? We wanted to filter the number of workers who had a higher date between those two dates. Correct. So, similarly, when we create an integration, when we launch the core connector worker, it will prompt me for these four dates. It will always prompt me for these four dates. So I have to enter. So you see by default, by default, the as of entry moment is the current moment. By default, the effective date is today's date. That is the default. I can change it, of course. But by default, these are today's date and today's effective moment. Now what is the last successful effective moment? What is the last successful effective date? So when you run this integration on a schedule, every day, every month, every week, whichever is your schedule. So it tries to take this value last successful as of entry moment. So the last time the integration ran, the last time it ran, what was the as of entry moment in that run? Right. It stores that information. It uses it in the next run as the last successful as of entry moment. Got it. This is the as of entry moment from the previous run. Right, so that is what it needs to understand. Okay. From what time or till what time? I have already read. It is like a bookmark, right? It says, okay. I've already read the records as of 21st of April, 8 p.m. P.S.T. I've already read that. I've already. 
I already know the changes that have happened till that particular date and time. Now I'm looking for changes between 21st of April and 28th of April. Right. Otherwise, if it was always taking all the workers, all the changes, then it would be creating duplicates, isn't it? That's why it looks at only these things. I mean, this is the significance of that. Understood change detection. Little bit got some idea of it. All right. So now let me ask you an interview level question. For worker D. Okay. For worker D. We are not looking at higher workers. Now we are only looking at Contact change. Right. Our integration only looks at contact change information. There is a contact change. So we are looking at contact change for. Yeah, let's say contact. Okay, worker D had a contact change on 15th of April with effect from 26th of April. Everything is done. They initiated the contact change process. About their personal or home email address. But they entered the same email address as their new address, but the contact information process was initiated. The worker entered the new home email. Clicked on OK Submit. It went for approval. The process completed successfully. So there was an entry in the transaction log saying that the worker D had a contact change. Our integration looks for contact change. Right. And this is the entry date. Effective date. So, if you look at this, previously you said that this worker should be included in the output. Correct. That's what we had said. Because, of course, there is a change in the in the business process. Now my question now is. Given this new piece of information that you have, will this worker be included in the output or not? There was a change. I mean a business process, a transaction that happened. So there is an entry in the transaction log. The worker satisfies eligibility criteria. The worker satisfies the change. I mean as per the as of effective moment, last effective date, if all of that conditions are satisfied, but still. We are asking. I'm asking you this question. Will this worker be included in the output or not? And you said no. Now my question would be, why not? Let's look at this. This, this page, one more time. Right. Can you read the last sentence? If the worker has any changes in field values, Or eligibility. Then worker will then workday will generate an appropriate creation, change or deletion message. So in this case, we are asking, in this particular scenario, for worker D. 
What do you think happened? There is no change right. There was no change. It was a change process. It was initiated. The worker had to enter the information. But what they entered was the same as the previous value. Right. The worker is eligible. There was a change. It was effective dated. Everything was correct. Everything was as expected. The only thing is. There was no change. So. Will the change be? Will the worker be included in the output? What do you think now? Now the worker D will not be included, given this new piece of information. Right. So there has to be a change. There has to be a change and it has to satisfy this criteria. Last successful as of entry. Last successful effective date as of entry effective date. Right. So there are multiple factors that are coming together to work on the change detection. To identify whether a worker is included in the output or not. Right. So if we have a good understanding of this change detection process, we would be able to inform our customers about, like why a worker is going to be included or not going to be included.